Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on Propofol. Propofol is identified in 1980 and available commercially in 1986. It was initially prepared in Cremophor EL, but due to anaphylactic reactions and severe pain on injection, it was reformulated in an emulsion. It is a substituted stable phenolic compound known as 2,6-diisopropylphenol. It is highly lipid soluble, water insoluble, and formulated in 0.5%, 1%, or 2% emulsion in soybean oil. Other constituents include egg lecithin, which is a phospholipid, and glycerol. It is a potential culture medium. It is not an antimicrobially preserved product. Addition of bacteriostatic EDTA reduces the risk of bacterial contamination. It is a weak organic acid with a pKa of 11. It is not contraindicated in patients who are allergic to eggs. Egg albumin is antigenic, whereas egg lecithin is not. Mechanism of action It enhances inhibitory synaptic transmission by activation of the chloride channel on the beta-1 subunit of the GABA-A receptor. It also inhibits acetylcholine release in the prefrontal cortex and parts of the limbic system. It inhibits the NMDA glutamate receptors and has additional effects at the cannabinoid receptors. Clinical uses includes induction and maintenance of anesthesia in adults and children. However, it is not recommended for children less than one month of age. Rapid early recovery of consciousness occurs. However, this benefit is lost if induction is followed by maintenance with inhalational agents for more than 10 to 15 minutes. It is used in sedation such as intensive care and during procedures under local anesthesia or regional anesthesia. When given by low-dose infusion, it can be used as an antiemetic. Absolute contraindications include airway obstruction and known hypersensitivity. It should only be used intravenously. The dose for induction of anesthesia is 1 to 2 mg per kg in adults. Children should be twice this dose and elderly should be half this dose. In elderly, it should be given slowly an initial dose of 1.25 mg per kg, then 10 mg slow increments until consciousness is lost to avoid the hypotensive effects. For total intravenous anesthesia, the typical dose ranges between 4 and 12 mg per kg per hour or 4 to 8 microgram per mil effective site concentration. The antiemetic dose is 0.5 to 1 mg per kg per hour. Onset and duration. An induction dose of propofol will lead to rapid loss of consciousness within a minute, typically 20 to 40 seconds, or in one arm brain circulation time, which is the time taken for the drug to travel from the site of injection, usually the arm, to the brain. Rapid redistribution to peripheral tissues leads to rapid awakening. Pharmacokinetics. It is highly protein bound up to 98%. There is a large volume of distribution, 2 to 10 liters per kg. The half-life, initial distribution half-life alpha of propofol is short, typically 2 to 3 minutes, but can range 1 to 8 minutes, whereas the intermediate distribution beta-1 half-life takes 30 to 60 minutes. The terminal phase decline beta-2 is less steep and typically takes 3 to 8 hours, but can be up to 12 hours. The contact-sensitive half-life for a 2-hour infusion of propofol is 16 minutes and 41 minutes for an 8-hour infusion. Propofol is primarily metabolized in the liver with production of sulfates and glucuronide conjugates and other inactive metabolites. The kidneys excrete these metabolites, mainly glucuronides, into the urine and only 0.3% of propofol is excreted unchanged. We move on to pharmacodynamics. CNS effects includes CNS depression and hypnosis, reduction in cerebral oxygen metabolism, cerebral blood flow and intracranial pressure decreases, hiccups are more common with rapid injection, excitatory effects and dystonic movements may occur, particularly in children. The EEG pattern is initial activation, then dose-related depression. It is an effective anticonvulsant at higher doses. It has rapid recovery and minimal hangover effect. The cardiovascular system. The systemic vascular resistance decreases due to vasodilation. Preload decreases. Bradycardia is more common. 
Standby vagolytics, especially for patients with pre-existing bradycardia on where, or where other drugs that can cause bradycardia are used. It is a myocardial depressant by inhibition of calcium channels. Reduction of contractility reduces the myocardial oxygen demand. Degree of hypotension reduced by decreasing the rate of administration. The pressure response to tracheal intubation is attenuated more compared to thiopental. Propofol is a respiratory depressant. It suppresses laryngeal reflexes as well. Laryngospasm and coughing are uncommon. It is the induction agent of choice when inserting LMAs. There is no effect on bronchial muscle tone. Propofol is an antiemetic. Muscle tone is reduced when propofol is used. It does not affect uterine tone. It crosses the placenta. Use in pregnancy is not recommended by the manufacturer. The data sheet for propofol states that it should not be used in pregnancy, but this is increasingly ignored. Many maternity units routinely use propofol for general anesthesia in caesarean sections. The APGAR scores did not differ significantly when thiopenta or propofol was used as an induction agent in women undergoing C-section under general anesthesia. However, there was a higher rate of NICU admission among neonates in the propofol group. Propofol offers the advantage of a shorter recovery time. This is the result of a research done by Janat et al. in 2015. Propofol causes transient decreases in blood flow to the liver and the kidneys. However, the LFT are not deranged after 24-hour infusion of propofol. Propofol decreases the plasma cortisol levels. However, there is a normal response to synectin test. Next, we move on to the adverse effects of propofol. Propofol causes CVS depression. Profound hypotension, especially if given in a fast bolus, especially in a hypovolemic, untreated hypertensive patients or those with pre-existing cardiac disease. Hypotension is less marked if given slowly or by infusion. Propofol can cause respiratory depression and apnea is more common and longer duration than after barbiturate administration. Propofol can cause excitatory phenomena. It is more frequent with induction than with propofol. There are occasional reports of convulsion and myoclonus during recovery from anesthesia. Due to the rapid redistribution and metabolism, there is risk of awareness. Counteract this by administering additional doses of propofol or inhalational agents. Pain on propofol injection can occur in up to 40% of patients. POPI is immediate as well as delayed after 10 to 20 seconds. Immediate pain is due to irritation of the vein endothelium and delayed pain is due to transient receptor potential and chirin 1 and TRP vanilloid 1 stimulation which are non-selective ligand gated cation channels. The stimulation of these receptors mediates the release of neuropeptides and this induces vascular leakage and dilation, neurogenic inflammation in the periphery and central sensitization in the spinal dorsal horn. Measures to reduce pain on propofol injection includes giving propofol via a large vein, small doses of lidocaine injected shortly before propofol such as 10 mg, mix lidocaine 10 to 20 mg per 20 mg of propofol in a syringe, Use propofol in an emulsion of medium to long chain triglycerides and soya. Use propofol of lower concentration, such as 0.5%. Other measures kindly refer to the article by Kalindi Anil, published in 2016. Extravasation or accidental intra-arterial injection does not appear to result in adverse effects. Skin rash can occur occasionally and anaphylaxis has been reported with propofol use. Propofol infusion syndrome is a severe condition characterized by hyperlipidemia, bradycardia, profound metabolic acidosis, rhabdomyolysis, fatty liver, renal and cardiac failure. Risk factors include children, adolescents, especially less than 16 years old, head injury, long-term infusion, and use of vasopressors. It may be due to the effects on the mitochondria. Direct inhibition of the respiratory chain of oxidative phosphorylation compromising 
meta mitochondrial metabolism of free fatty acids. However, this theory remains unproven. It is recommended that infusions of propofol should be less than 4 mg per kg per hour. Avoid use in long-term sedation amongst children less than 16 years old. Propofol in total intravenous anesthesia. Advantages include good recovery characteristics, avoidance of inhalational agents and their pollution, less nausea and cardio stability. These advantages include the risk of awareness, complexity and cost of equipment, and importance of a secure IV access. Propofol is a highly lipophilic hypnotic that distributes rapidly from the blood to the effector site. It then undergoes rapid redistribution to muscle and fat before being metabolized. The T half the half-life alpha is 2 to 3 minutes, half-life beta 1 is 30 to 60 minutes, and half-life beta 2 is 3 to 8 hours. The immediate volume of distribution is 228 mL per kg and steady state volume of distribution in a healthy young adult is around 800 liters. The contact sensitive half time is the time taken for the plasma concentration to half after an infusion designed to maintain a constant blood level of the drug is stopped. It depends on the type of drug and duration of infusion. For example, a 2 hour infusion of propofol results in a contact sensitive half time of 16 minutes compared to 4.5 minutes for remifentanil. An 8-hour infusion for propofol will result in 41 minutes in its contact-sensitive half-time and 9 minutes for remifentanil. The whole body clearance of propofol is 2.5 liters per minute. Additional information. Propofol is not a trigger for malignant hyperpyrexia. It can be used safely in patients with porphyria. It does not release histamine and adverse reactions are very rare. It does not have any marked modulating effects on the immune system. FOS propofol is a prodrug that is converted to active propofol some minutes after intravenous injection. Induction of anesthesia and the onset of sedation is thus delayed. It does not cause pain on injection, but like propofol, it can cause perineal pain or dysesthesia, the mechanism of which is unclear. There are no material advantages over propofol and is unlikely ever to become a mainstream agent. Agent PFO713 is a substituted phenol but with larger 2,6 side chains. It is not associated with pain on injection and causes less cardiovascular instability and may replace propofol in the future. These are my references. Thank you.